Hey folks, it's Brian here with, and I am doing my Jeep uh, project. Yeah. All right, so this is a video is Jeep 71. Um, this is my salvage uh, build of a salvage Jeep. And this video is about installing a savvy transfer case shifter, which is an upgrade. It's not a repair. Well, it kind of is a repair. The, the shifter was damaged in the accident that led to me getting this Jeep. Uh, so uh, let's just cut to the chase. So here's the box. Uh, it includes trash, but no instructions. Yeah, let's see what day this was. Uh, so this is the minded body. I don't know what. Mm, Epic time sample edition. I don't know. Trash newspaper. Anyway, um, here's the kit. There's uh, a little bit of hardware in here. Let's uh, clamp this and see what it is. Definitely not going to win any prizes with packaging. There we go. Put that in its place. I, so, literally, the only reason that was bagged was so they could tie it. So, we got a clevis pin, uh, a ball connection. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Shift lever. One bracket, another bracket. It's partially assembled. Um, some more hardware. <clears throat> and I did print off some stuff on their website, so let me go grab that, because that's kind of some instructions. So the instructions consist of basically two pages um, on the product uh, description. So... Uh, We'll see if this is of any use. So we'll set that to the side. Uh, more junk. Web pages don't usually print well. I also printed out Novak's uh, instructions. Novak has significantly nicer instructions. They have 14 pages of instructions that explains what you're doing and includes pictures and it's just really, really well written instructions. And these things are very similar so it should work very similar. I'm not sure who copied who, but chances are really good there's not a lot of originality in all these. And then the Chinese felt left out, so they got into the act of copying these kits as well. So let's uh, see what we're dealing with. Yeah, this is a pretty decent... This is a decent um, pushrod kit. And these things are nothing magical. I mean, there's some swaging that goes on here. Um... And then you adjust the length of the rod by moving these back and forth. It's going to be approximately in the right spot. Um, the first step is going to be to get under there and to get the old stuff out. Now, I've got my um, drive shaft out and I have the exhaust out. So I've got the front drive shaft. So it's a lot easier for me to get under here than it would be um, for a lot of people. I'm not going to drop the skid plate. The other thing that I've done, and I don't see anybody else doing this, and don't I don't know why, it just makes it a whole lot easier, is I took the Tupperware out of the middle of the Jeep, and that's going to make it really easy for me to reach under here and get to these bolts. And um, that's really not that hard to remove. It's, it's like a 15-minute project to pull that out. Um, and I think... If you're going to work on top transmission, you probably should have access to it. I've left it apart because I think it'll actually be really easy to get under here for um, some of the stuff. But like this bolt here, this bolt would be a pain in the ass to access from downstairs. So, you know, pulling this, pulling this shift assembly out is just not a big deal to get access to this bolt. Um, so anyway... Uh, and let's go underneath there and start ripping crap out of here because all that shit is going away. Uh, by the way, if you enjoy the video, please remember to hit the like button. Um, I appreciate that. Let me know what you think in the comments, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, keep it civil. Um, 
And if you want to see more of my videos, uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit the bell icon if you want to know when they come out. And don't forget to check out my playlist because that's how I organize my videos. So I have a Jeep build playlist and this is video number 70. It'll probably be close to 100 videos getting this thing back on the road. Um, and we're really, really close. I'm hoping in the next week or two that this thing will be on the road and running around and I'm excited about it. I've won a Jeep for a while. And, uh, you know, probably you've seen two or two have done it a different way, but, you know, here we are. And I'm going to have a nice, solid, steady, dependable Jeep when I'm done. Um, I've done probably $1,500 worth of preventative maintenance that will eliminate problems from happening. Um, so, anyway, let's do it to it. So, I need to take these bolts out. And I'm not sure if we're going to use them again or not, so I'm going to hold on to them. So I'm going to try and pay more attention to the camera angle. Uh, all right. So there we go. That comes right out. And we need this to come off. So let's see how that's on there. So we need this, this, and then this bracket has got to come out. So let me get a screwdriver for this because I think that's the best way to deal with that. And uh, I think that's 13 millimeter. thing is that part looked a whole lot newer um, than the rest of this Jeep where this gets us. So that was correct. This is a 13 millimeter bolt. an adjustment link. Alright, well, I'm just going to adjust it right the fuck off. It's so funny. 
funny how these things stay together until you don't want them to. One could be forgiven for thinking this is actually reliable because it won't come apart. But just remember, it's damaged and it doesn't fit well in here anyway. And it needs to come out. All right, so there's some kind of retaining thing here. So let me look at this from the top side. use a bigger screwdriver There's just nothing to pry on, that's the problem. It's not that I can't get it apart, I just can't, I don't have anything to pry on. Nope. Huh. All right, well, I'm gonna take one of these other brackets apart. There we go. So the trick to that was to twist the screwdriver. All right, so now, all we've got left is this bolt and the two bolts up here. So I think that's a 15, so I'm gonna start with that. Thank you. 
No, it is not. All right, let me find the socket. Okay, it seems to be a 9 16 and I can get a ratchet in here. Now, before I take the easy way out, I'm gonna see if I could do this from down here. Now, this would be a pain in the ass, so I'm gonna go upstairs and do this. And with this uh, Tupperware removed up here, this is substantially easier. That's probably the best thing you could do with this, is rip it out. Fascinating thing is, that was recently replaced. There are new parts there. Okay, so now what we gotta do is figure out what size this is back here. And it is the same size, it is a 9 16th. Now, let's see if it's gonna come off nicely. Well, it's shifted the transmission, but that's for a transfer case, but that's fine. I'll figure it out. If you just wiggle this, that'll come out. Now, finding the bolt that dropped, a little more work, but not impossible. And, I don't know what that was. I thought there was a lock washer in there. Alright. Really do appreciate this lift. Locking that in there. Maybe it was just a little piece of plastic, but I swore there was a lock nut or a lock washer. I'm not seeing it. Oh.
Nope. So I'm going to keep that there because that's going to help me. Okay, there was a washer up here. So I got it. Oh, there it is. Boop. There it is. All right. And it is not a lock washer. All right, whatever. So we're going to put the new bracket in. Washer in. And then I'm going to go get some thread lock because I don't trust this. out this has quite a bit of torque associated with it um, and I don't know why it's just holding this in place but you know it is what it is so I'm gonna tighten it with a ratchet should be neutral it is and that's going to give me access Sorry for the dead air time, guys. It's all right. Thirty foot pounds is the spec on this. Uh, it's going to take an extension, so let me go grab that.
and of course my flashlight turned itself off. Good enough. All right, let me go change the battery on this light and I'll be right back. So I need to put these um, bolts in to the bracket, but I'm working by myself in this person project. So I'm gonna show you what I think will solve this problem. Uh, let me put some gloves on first. So, I don't have to hold them. I, I just need to keep them from popping out. So, I'm going to... God, I'm fucking kidding me. There we go. Oh, my God. No, that ain't going to work. Damn it. It's too big. Again, we just need to hold this stuff here. It doesn't have to be like, it doesn't have to be tightened. It doesn't have to be bolted down. It just needs to be held still so it doesn't push out when I try to get that bracket in. So I'm just using some scrap that I have laying around and You could use bricks, you could use pretty much anything you've got laying around will work. Because you're not, it's not a ton of force. You're just trying to keep this stuff from, you know, when you try to put that bracket up there, these are going to uh, fall out. So this will stop that. Okay. So next, we need to get this in place. And again, these bolts are going to drop out the instant you push on them. So this is what the stuff above there is for. Now oh, you got to be fucking kidding me that these are not, yeah, they're not lock nuts. You know, I really question the hardware choices here. I mean, I'm sure this will work, but this is just not like, it's not great choices. Alright, so I'm going to have to mess with one of them. That's still really good. So what I'm going to do at this point is uh, jockey with this one a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to add some thread lock to it because these are all going to need thread lock. I'm not. I'm not going to trust these with no, not being nylon lock nuts. It just just irritates me that they cut this corner. This is a hundred and hundred and something dollar part. So, you know, I, I just, I don't understand. I mean, it's not like it would have cost them a whole lot to put lock nuts in this kit.
I, I just don't see how you could do this without taking um, the shifter off at the top. these tightened uh, I'm gonna figure out what they're real close to 13 so I think they're half inch uh, let me figure that out and get this set up I'm not gonna stop the camera actually maybe I will Uh, I'm going to reach around and grab them with a wrench and then I'm going to hit them with the impact uh, electric impact gun and get them nice and tight. Well, that went pretty well. So at this point, that's basically done. All right, so now we gotta take this one and figure out where it fits. wasn't against that so that doesn't make sense
Hmm. Well, there's really only a couple places for this to go, and that's one of them. Okay, it does go there, but it's just a really tight fit. All right, so let's do the same thing we did upstairs. We're gonna put thread lock all over this thing. I don't know how the hell they expect this to go on. Let me get the upstairs one set and then I'll work on it. Yeah, taking this trim out up here is absolutely the easiest way to do this. requires a fair amount of force to bend this cable where it needs to go so you can get the bracket to seat properly. because there's really not shit for access down there. Let me look at the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so... Um, sorry, I need three hands here. That's one bolt, the other bolt is right here. And again, there's just way better access from up here than there is from down there. You'd have to come through this or underneath this, both of which would be a pain in the ass. And from up here, there actually looks to be decent access. Uh, sorry, let me get the camera set up. Okay, so the instructions don't stay shit. God damn it. Um, yeah, the instructions don't say shit. So, uh, and neither the Novak ones or, and certainly not the savvy help yourself fucking skeleton instructions. So, all right, that's one. right I just can't see around the corner Let's stick my all right I'm gonna crawl under there and look and see what my clearance looks like Nope, 
not happening from down there or up there. That sucks ass too. That's going to be tight enough. All right, so that's all the way forward, and I think the other one's all the way forward. So I think these are in position to be adjusted. Okay, so the instructions that come with this thing, they just flat suck. Okay, they don't explain any of what's going on. So you really got to look at their competitors instructions. So this is a clevis. Okay. And the other one is a ball socket. The ball socket goes on the part by you, the driver. The clevis goes to the shift linkage on the transfer case. And so the way this works is you want to thread this on here. You'll have to figure, you'll have to play with it to figure out where you can get this on here to thread it. This is, this would be a lot easier with the um, skid plate removed, but I'm this far in, I'm not removing the skid plate. So you've got to kind of force it. Getting it started is the hard part. Okay, so what you're aiming for is no tension on the pin. Now, how you get the fucking pin in here? <laughs> I have no idea. But you can see through this hole, so again, it's not that big of a deal. And this is irritating because you really can't get this in, in the right, I mean, it's in neutral right now. So it, it really needs to be in 
pi um, for this to be right. All right, let me get a, a wrench. Now maybe you have the hand strength to shift this by hand, but I don't. Okay, so that's all the way. That would be four low, four high, neutral, and high. All right, so that's the position we want. Now what I did was a clapper's pin. And while that might be where you adjust it, that's not going to be where you attach it because it's going to be slightly less than fucking impossible um, to get this pin to go through here in the first place. Uh, this is really something that would have been... So I need to move this flashlight so I can see better. Don't worry, every bit of dirt and gunk that your Jeep has ever produced is down in this transfer case pan. And this connection is really tight. Right, so I think I'm going to make myself a little more space here. certainly looks better but again I don't think I don't think you can get the connection in there uh, in that spot in that direction so I mean, this is like five times I've dropped it now I think the Chinese solution might actually be a better one So one of the other things you can use with things like this is you can put them, you can use a pair of pliers to reach up in here. And this might be it right here. There we go. For our next magic trick, we're going to fucking put a color pin in. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and certainly color pin is going to be a colossal pain in the ass for somebody with no depth perception ah, shit and I had it too
All right, so it's much easier to do this with uh, everything out of your way, but that's just not always gonna be possible. So you wanna use a small set of pliers to grab the cotter pin and deform it so it won't pull out. So usually what you do is you twist these. In this case, I just don't have a uh, cotter pin broke. Well, that's reassuring. So I don't, I'm having trouble with the clearances here. And again, this would be, this is the part where I'm paying for not having taken the, uh, the, the pan off. that's what we want so now again we're gonna work out where this left shifter is so four low four high neutral no maybe not neutral So that should be four high, four low, four high, two high. Really, that should have been neutral right there. Let me check the thing. I, I don't have a label on my shifter and I haven't driven a Jeep in forever. So let me look at some pictures. Okay, so we want this all the way forward so that's in the right position. Now we gotta work on up there. And uh, this piece comes apart. So you pull back on that and this ball comes out. Um, the shifter's in the right spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna thread this on here That's really tight. This one's good. This one doesn't need adjustment. This one's gonna probably need loosening uh, based on what I'm seeing here. So we'll see. First things first, we gotta figure out how this attaches to that. So I think this is the pattern. So there's a little bushing that goes there. And then this goes on the other side of the, the linkage with a lock washer that they did spring for. So. check because I, I don't see what this b rubber bushing is going to do 
and I don't think I can fit through it. Let me look at it from upstairs. I gotta pull this piece of trim off. Now 
out we can work on this it's much easier to work on take this out but it's a lot less frustration so I don't see how this fits in there yeah. hmm. drop a dime on you um, I just don't see it all right I'm gonna drill the damn thing out I am rapidly sick of it I think that's essentially the same size. So that might have opened that up. Maybe not. Well, another, another try or two. say you don't have to remove this but I'm gonna be honest I don't see how you couldn't remove this I think that's got to come out I don't see how this comes out, but I think it has to come out. That piece of shit's out. Let's see what the rest of this hardware looks like. And I get it. The instructions say don't remove it, but the reality is, yeah, it's gotta come out. Fucking shitty ass instructions. Man, it pisses me off because it wastes a lot of time. All right, so that goes in like that and we want it on this side. Let me double check the orientation. All right, so this drops into here. And what do you know? It locks in perfectly. It fucking irritates me. And then this comes on this side. 
with this. And that makes sense to me. Piece of shit rubber bushing. So that's a half inch. This is three eighths. And basically, like anything else, you just want to tighten it. And you want to get that solid because the nylon is what keeps it from backing off. And that's probably the last time I'll see that thing with any luck. So let's go. I'm going to put this back in and now I can work on it again. This is a whole lot easier to do up here. So to me, it's worth taking this out and the console. All right. So I do think it makes sense to start putting the console back in because... Now, some of these bolts do double duty, and it just is what it is. But, like, these don't do double duty, so they're going to get put down. All right, so that's all that's gonna get put in right now. And that's good enough, so that's that's too high. So let's uh, start looking at the alignment, and I think we can do that from under up, up top, actually. So one of the things I wanna do is put a dab of um, grease on this ball. Yeah, you guys can't see it from here, so we'll have to go downstairs and work. Okay, now I'm sorry that the optics aren't ideal, but remember I actually have to work under here. So the biggest issue I can see here is that this cable needs to come out. That's almost it. Now, there's two ways to do this. I could lengthen this piece, which isn't gonna happen, or I could um, move the cable end. So I'm gonna move the cable end, because I think that's easier. So I'm gonna get a little crescent wrench. <clears throat> Okay, so the way this works is you just tighten these. And again, I'm gonna tighten this one down. Actually, I'm gonna need a second one. Let me grab that real fast. Fortunately, I have a nice collection of these. <laughs> da 
doesn't have to be super tight, but it does need to be tight enough that it won't move. Now, in the case of this one, Um, we're loosening this one so and this is going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass to get to uh i gotta figure out what the metrics are here are you fucking kidding me This is a one inch. Let me see if a one inch wrench will fit. Because if it will, it'll be a lot easier. That's not gonna work. All right, let me see what else I got. Okay, so you guys are watching. Good. Um, the solution is from above. And, uh, you know, I, I just don't know how the hell somebody could do this without removing the console and the tunnel. Because you don't have access from below. I mean, you guys are seeing me fail miserably. Trying to... Uh, do this from down there. Hell, this is hard enough up here. Uh, a lot of this is shitty design. I mean, this is just, there. It, it's not designed for adjustability uh, and access. Um, and the instructions are suck out. I would tell you, buy the Novak one, even if it's more money, because at least they have good instructions.
So the, the name of the game here is to get this nut loose enough that you can rotate both of these lock nuts. shouldn't seem locked, but it is. There it goes. trying to do is figure out what my alignment needs to look like. All right, so I need to go a little further. A little further still. Okay, that's it right there. So what I want to do now is secure these these nuts up here. So let's get this tightened up. This would be really frustrating if you were didn't have that tunnel out and you're working on this from down here. Hell, that's really frustrating and I am working on it with the access to the tunnel.
Nope, no, nope. gotta go upstairs. There's no way to do this from down here. At least not without a lot of cussing. So the next thing we need to do is lock this nut down and I'm going to see if I can find the wrench for that. it doesn't take a ton of force. The other thing I want to do is I want to put lock to lock thread lock on it. that this is going to fail when you're in three feet of water and mud. And that's the last place you want it to fail.
Alright. So. Oh yeah, this definitely is a good place for some thread lock. There we go. Just needs to be snug against it. So at this point, we've got it installed. We can shift from, and I'll let you guys uh, watch. Uh, I'm gonna go upstairs, or I'm gonna go up in the cab, and I'm going to uh, run the shifter through its paces. So that is four low currently. for being in here. Four high, Thanks for watching and I hope that this is helpful because again, the instructions suck and I have a different way of doing it. I'd like this not to be against this wiring. Um, I'm, not, I'm not fond of this. Let me see if I can fix this. Nope, I can't. That's just the way it's gonna run. Well, you know what I could do. So what I could do is bring this around, and that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, that keeps the pressure off the connector and the wires. Um, but uh, this is another area that some folks say doesn't do well. So it, it, it looks pretty brittle. Uh, I don't know why they didn't make that on metal. It's a transmission shifter. Transmission lines go there. Uh, one of my other projects that's coming up, and uh, I got the parts coming in tomorrow for it, is these stupid little plastic clips uh, were pulled out and didn't, like, that, that's it. They're destroyed. Uh, they don't um, sell them. I don't know why they don't sell them. It's, you know, clearly you could sell those without selling the rest of the lines, but yeah, Mopar. So, um, anyway, I'm going to attach these to the frame here so i'll be doing it here and here and possibly in a couple other places but we're going to get these line brake and fuel lines secured um and then we're going to get the uh exhaust and um we're going to get this thing buttoned up and back on the road here thanks for watching have a great night